Well, good evening. Good evening, Facebook. Good evening, YouTube. And welcome to Mythical Ireland, the headquarters of Mythical Ireland. Uh, something of an impromptu, unexpected little quick live stream tonight. No, not a bonus episode of Live Irish Myths. Um, I know that some of you might be uh, excited about uh, such things. But something else that I want to talk about briefly. You're all very welcome along. I'm also, um, yes, sorry, I already said that. I'm live streaming uh, simultaneously on Facebook and YouTube. So good evening, everybody. So I wanted to briefly just talk about something uh, related to books. What a surprise. Mariana Dunn says, hello, Anthony. Hello to you also. And Jennifer Foley is saying, hello, Giagrich. Um, So it should come to you as no surprise that I have amassed a very substantial collection of books here in my library uh, in Drogheda, in the Mythical Ireland headquarters. I'm going to do something uh, very unprecedented, which is to very quickly just show you the rest of that library that you don't see in the in the live stream uh, on Monday evenings, the uh, Live Irish Myths. Uh, now, I know it might look, it's a really surprising one. Okay, let's have a little competition. Uh, and there's no prize for this, right? Uh, see if anybody can guess how many books are on those shelves. Guess to the nearest 10 or 20. So... All of those and all of those. See if you can quickly guess. See if anybody is able to come up with something close to what's actually there. Somebody's going to be counting meticulously. I'll give the answer very shortly. Anyway, Nick Eska Casterton is in the house and says, hello, hello, Nick. Hope you're enjoying Island of the Setting Sun. And uh, thank you all uh, to those of you who shared your pictures of it. Uh, great to see all the excitement about uh, it arriving. On YouTube, Envy Beauty says 322. That is not correct. Peter Kennedy says 250. That is not correct. I'm not going to say whether you're low or high. Um, I'll, I'll leave it for a couple of minutes. See if you can guess. <laughs> Sherry Gallant says 3,000. No, no, that is not correct either. Desiree Riley. Hello, Desiree. I haven't seen you. I think you've missed. I think you were busy uh, for the last live live mits. Uh, Desiree says, happy to see you getting ready for another hurricane. Oh, dear. Six, 1625. That is not correct. Excuse me. I'm participating in a little tipple. And I can assure you I am sober. Matthew Bessel says 879 books. Uh, Tara McGrath says 360. Serena Swift says 510. Catherine Griffin says 626. Jennifer Foley says 785. Etain Scott says 1200. Nolene Egan on YouTube says 540. Stephen Walker, hello Stephen, how are you? Um, says 1200. <clears throat> Stefan Makaba says 2. Uh, Nuala Leonard says 1750 ish. Grace Quirk says 2,000. Caitlin Moon says circa 300. Uh, Kristen Gray Taggart is not guessing, but says, hello, Anthony and Tua. Been a while since I could tune in. Happy to be able to do so. Lean visually says Stefan Macaba. Uh, the actual answer uh, and uh, the closest, very, very, very close is Matthew Bessel, who said 879. The actual total is... 885 so uh if there was a prize matthew you would win it absolutely anyway we're not here to talk about how many books i have we are kind of right uh larissa kama says i'd guess 333 uh yeah it's a funny thing because uh people come in here and they look and they go yeah there's about 400 books there there's actually more than double that anyway um in the past week, I have managed to get my hands on what I consider to be a beautiful, superb, valuable, comprehensive, scholarly piece of work. And as you, you'll guess by the name of the live stream that it is called The Field Names of County Mead. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about this. This book was put together 
by a group or a committee, uh, a group of volunteers, basically, who went out into the landscape of County Meath uh, and scoured the place over the period of several years, gathering information about the place names, uh, well, specifically the field names. So you'll know from uh, Mythical Ireland and the Live Irish Myth series that there is uh, quite a substantial collection of onomastic study or place name study. For example, we have the Dunshanicus, which is a medieval uh, uh, collection of place name myths. We have the likes of P.W. Joyce and his three volume uh, pl Irish Names of Places, published about 100 or so years ago. We have, um, well, we have the Ordnance Survey, but specifically with the Ordnance Survey letters and the work that they did in the 1830s, uh, John O'Donovan and colleagues collecting uh, myths and uh, place names uh, and the, uh, the derivation of the place names and information about them. But um, in addition to sort of like townland names, parish names, town and village names, uh, landscape, the names of landscape features. We also have a remarkable thing in Ireland where, uh, you know, for years, we named individual fields on farmsteads. Uh, they all had names. So just for example, I'm going to open up on the page here about uh, Ballinamona, which is a townland near Carneros, and Carneros is near to Kells in County Meath. Now, Kells would be very famous, first of all, for the Book of Kells and, and the Monastery of Kells, uh, but also uh, for the Synod of Kells in uh, the uh, 12th century in 1152, which was a very important uh, part of church reform. And if you wanted to learn more about that, just read my very recent blog post and look at the very latest episode of Live Irish Myths, uh, which dealt with Scribes and Kings, Religion, Politics, and the Medieval Manuscripts of Ireland. Kimberly Halligan is in the house, says, Hi, Anthony and Tua, so glad to catch a live session. Alex Casterton is also in the house. Nice to see you on tonight. Hi, Tua. <clears throat> so just in Ballinamona, in that townland, there are fields called Crook Rua, Curros, Lime Kiln Field, Curros, there's two Curros, Well Field, the Pound, the Garden Field, the High Field, Coopers, the Avenue Field, the Middle Field, the Road Field, the Crooked Acre, the Hanging Field, and the Church Field. Now, this isn't just what you'd call uh, an encyclopedic, or it isn't a, a mere index of place names. It is a wonderful exploration of places and names. And, well, I have to show you photography as well. I mean, you know, it's so richly adorned. It's in full color throughout. It runs to just over 400 pages. Now, of course, there is an index of townlands that were surveyed uh, in an appendix at the end of the book. Um, so this was published with the help of uh, a lot of different bodies, actually. Uh, there was European Funding, Department of Environment, Mead Partnership, um, Mead County Council, Mead Archaeological and Historical Society, the Irish Farmers Association, the FBD Trust, among others. I can't read one or two of the logos at the back, all of the sponsors of this work. <clears throat> now, this was, past tense, a limited edition print run. At the time it was published, which I think was 2013, if I'm not mistaken, and if I am, please forgive me. I do make mistakes from time to time. I am human. <laughs> 2013, published by Mead Fields Name Field Names Project. The project chairperson, John McCullen, coordinator, Joan Mullen, project secretary, Oliver Ward. Compiled by Joan Mullen, edited by Francis Tallon of Mead County Council Library Service. Um, printed by Anglo Printers in Drogheda, designed and typeset by Anu Design of Tara. It is a wonderful thing. It's wonderful. And I also have in my collection, 
Oh, you see, here we're getting to the exciting bit. I also have in my collection. Well, I happen to have the field names of County Louth, which is my own home county. Uh, again, a beautifully, richly adorned uh, work, uh, but also uh, the product of painstaking research over a long period of time. Now, we're not here to talk about Louth. We're here to talk about Mead. So here's my copy. Guess what's coming next? <laughs> yes. This is a surplus copy. Well, surplus to my requirements because I have one. So what I've decided to do, call this cheating, if you will. This is a little bit of cheeky marketing, you know. Doris O'Hara says, hi, Anthony and Tua. Hello, Doris. Parigo Komiski says, the survey of the names up in the Cooley Mountains is amazing. I'll send it on to you, Anthony. Brilliant stuff, Parig. Thank you very much for that. Adina Sparks is in the house and says, hello, Gillian Gogarty is watching. Hello, Gillian. And Scott Doherty is also here. Hello to all of you. Uh, Alistair McKinnon is in the house on YouTube and as is Todd Desperate. Hello, Todd, and hello, Alistair. Des McK Mackenzie Harris, guest 875, which was, again, very close, says the hatchet field on the Black Mountain Belfast. Fantastic. Janet Moran says, Gia Gich, Anthony. Gia Ismurugich, Janet. Anyway, I'm going to raffle this. But there's a little bit of a catch. Patricia Patsy O'Malley Boyd says, hi, everyone. Lillian Cruz says, hello, Anthony. So um, it isn't just a simple matter of raffling it. The book, when it was printed, I'm not sure what the print run was. Uh, limited edition. So I imagine perhaps 500 copies. Uh, I have spoken tonight to a... Project, I'm sorry, I read his name out there a moment ago. I just want to make sure I have his title right. I spoke this evening to, you think I just got around to just saying what I wanted to say without being long-winded. Uh, yes, the project chairperson, John McCullen, tells me that it is out of print and unavailable. I checked on Amazon and it says we have no copies. It was 30 euros when it was new. I suspect second-hand copies will uh, fetch much, much greater uh, price tags. Uh, Jackie McCusker Hornsey says, Evening. Good evening, Jackie. Hello. And Barbara Murphy says, Hello to the Tua. Siobhan Blank is watching. Hello, Siobhan. How are things with you? I hope you're keeping well. Lillian Cruz says, Hello, Anthony. So, anyway, to cut a long story short, I have decided that I'm going to raffle this, but there's a little bit of a catch. And that is that I will raffle it among anybody who uh, pre-orders a uh, Mythical Ireland 2021 calendar. So all of the pre-orders for that, I'm going to paste in a link as to where you can pre-order the calendar. I appreciate that. Probably a lot of you have already done so because the TUA uh, here are very, very good at supporting uh, the work of Mythical Ireland. And I thank you for that. Daniel Sullivan is lucky enough to have a copy well, treasure it, Daniel. Isn't it a wonderful uh, piece of work? It really is beautiful, you know? Anyway, I'll probably I'll just I'll read. A, I might just read, if I can, very quickly, I'll read. So it's not just all about field names. There are sort of larger articles, too. Um, I'm going to read about Tara. <clears throat> so uh, just to recap... The field names of County Meath, out of print, limited edition print run, beautiful book. I have, I have acquired a second copy of it, and I'm going to raffle it to anybody who pre-orders a 2021 Mythical Ireland calendar. And you'll see, if you go to that link on the Mythical Ireland page where the calendar is... Sorry, I think I may have pasted in the wrong link. I do apologize. <laughs> Live TV, huh? I'm going to paste in the link again. Will you sign the calendar, says Desiree. Ooh, you know what? I didn't market it as a signed thing because it's, you'll understand because it's difficult to know where to sign it. But if you if you want me to sign it, just let me know. What, when you reach out to me and instruct me and, I'll, and I'll, I'll put a signature on it. So I'll go to read briefly. And again, only a very brief passage because I don't want to uh, to breach copyright or anything. 
Uh, Deirdre Stone Berabi says, good evening from Florida. Born in Trim. Brilliant stuff, Deirdre. So some of this is your stomping ground. And this is uh, Winter Grazing by the Kings of Tara at Dunsany and Killeen. And this is by Padder Donahue of Killeen, Dunshockland, and Mary Rose Mulvaney of Belper. And Belper, some of you will know, is a townland very close to the Hill of Tara. Having been successful with our volunteer location applications, Padder and I decided to undertake the field names in the townlands of Dunsany and Killeen as a team instead of taking an individual townland each. Both of us live in the parish of Dunsany and were immediately at home with our project. We set out to do the best job we could. Padder, a farmer, had grown up in Killeen, and I had become very interested in my new environment on settling in Dunsany Parish. My husband had close ties with Killeen too, where his immediate family had farmed for many generations. The field names we were both familiar with, but now with the field name project to be tackled, we were about to become even more knowledgeable. Lone trees, types of hedges, crops, gates, bridges, quarries, etc. were all to be recorded. There were a total of 74 fields in Killeen and 45 in Dunsany. I should say at this point, it's very important to remember that all the time, smaller fields, which date back into time, are being sort of the hedges are being knocked and made into bigger fields. So this is a timely project, or it was, because uh, uh, farmers are, uh, of course, all, always expanding their farms uh, and opening up, uh, as I said, breaking the boundaries between smaller fields to make bigger ones. And some of these names go back to the time of the famine and even further back than that. Um, of course, you know me, in terms of my beliefs around Irish place names, many of them are ancient, some of them are pre-Christian, some of them are prehistoric, some of them even Neolithic. That's a controversial remark, but there you go. All of the fields that form part of the 600-acre Killeen Castle Golf Resort have now been landscaped into a golf course with its clubhouse and driving ranges. We recorded the names of the fields as indicated on our map, which has been specially prepared from Ordnance Survey vector maps approximately five to six years ago. In this historically rich area, thought to have been used for, for winter grazing by the kings of Tara, there are two castles, two manorial churches, graveyards, moats, ice houses, a deserted village, a derelict mill, wayside crosses, gateways and gates of numerous sizes, age and design, three rivers, an old coach house, numerous woods, bridges, as well as the parish church and school. Fantastic stuff, isn't it? An orchard, orchard field, is said to have been planted by Sir Horace Plunkett in his efforts to establish a cider industry in County Mead. Listen to the amount of history that is in these pages. It's fabulous. The path of the Mead, li Mead line is still clearly defined in a small section of Dunsany with the appropriately named Railway Woods and the Railway Bridge built in 1862 is still on active road duty. Two of the rivers, the Gansey and Rock, begin their life as small local springs, progressing into streams that flow through Dunsany and Killeen townlands. Neither of them have very far to go on their way to exit into the river Skane, S-K-A-N-E, as it flows through Killeen and Dunsany on its way to join the River Boyne in the grounds of Dalgan Park. Most of our field names are very simple, such as Narrow Corner and Well Field, or recorded the name of a family long departed, such as Larry's Garden or Brian's Bottoms. Each townland had a cow field where the employees of Killeen and Dunsany Castles could keep their cow. Many of the fields have stone-lined ditches, and this work is thought to have been undertaken to create employment in famine times. The cricket field was once a pristinely kept cricket ground, between 1900 and 1960 approximately, where Dunsany Cricket Club was based. Creepy stories abound all right. Some of these include the ghost of the fourth Earl of Fingal staring out above the main entrance of Killeen Castle. Haunted houses as gravestones were used for windowsills. Gates that opened as if a carriage was passing through. Fairy trees and a bottomless quarry. I guess this might have been a way of keeping children out of dangerous locations. There was also a hanging tree in Dun Dunsany used at the time of the 1798 rising on Tara.
When it fell, the timber ash was cut for firewood, which subsequently refused to ignite. Best of all was meeting our neighbours, letting them know about the project and getting the benefit of input from our fellow inhabitants. Many have spent all their lives in the locality and remember the path across the fields to school, the Wellingtons left at the field gate and school shoes hurriedly located from their hiding place. The summer parties hosted by Killeen and Dunsany Castles for their staff and their tenants. The whole project evolved around many elements apart from just verifying a field name. So you can see just how expansive this work is. It's really, really, really beautiful. And as uh, I mean, as I say, every spread is adorned with with imagery, maps, illustrations. The photography is beautiful. It's photos used across spreads, and of course, where applicable, uh, tables and indexes of field names. Uh, it is a most comprehensive work, a labour of love. One would say a true labour of love. Uh, by a group of very, very dedicated volunteers who spent a long time uh, looking around in the landscape, uh, you know, picking out clues to uh, uh, a past. Uh, Burr Whelan is in the house on Facebook, as is Tom King. Hello, Burr. And Tom Porrick Baines is watching. Hello, Porrick. And on YouTube, Flower Child is saying hello from Vegas. The full Irish GK says, Trinonoa August Tossa Fame. You're all very welcome along. When we look at the linguistic situation in the county, we note, of course, that Meath has been largely English-speaking English, English speaking for the past two centuries, although, as the late Dr. Gareth Fitzgerald has illustrated, a substantial proportion of the population spoke Irish down to the close of the 18th century. The decline thereafter was, however, rapid and sustained. The census <coughs> excuse me, of 1851, just immediately after the Great Famine, gives a total of about 9,000 Irish speakers, or just 6.4% of the county's population, for Meath. <clears throat> and by 1891, this had dropped to less than 1,500, or 1.9% of the population. Only in the northwest and north of the county did some hundreds of speakers survive down to the end of the 19th century. It is therefore quite in line with our expectations that the proportion of unadulterated Irish name forms among many hundreds gathered by the field name team is comparatively small, well under, well under one in ten, according to a rough estimate. And it should also be pointed out that a considerable number of the names that have been abstracted from the overall collection on the grounds that they appear to be, excuse me, fake sneeze, nearly, nearly, nearly just didn't happen, that they appear to be linguistically Irish are not readily amenable to interpretation. In many instances, the names may well have become distorted following the decline of Irish as the local vernacular, while in other cases, the type of spelling employed by the collectors may give rise to considerable ambiguity. On the whole, when attempting to restore the original Irish forms, it has been thought advisable to err on the side of caution rather than indulging in wild guesswork that may not be sustained by the available evidence. And so that's just another uh, quick uh, excerpt. And so here are some place name forms that will be familiar to anybody who studies Irish place names. And of course, Joyce's place names will be full of these words. Knuck and Knuckon or Knuckine, a hill or a hillock. Almost 80 examples. Park. A field, 34 examples. Mullock, which means a hilltop, 31. Kill or coil, a church or a wood, both usually anglicised kill, K-I-L-L, -L, and therefore well nigh impossible to separate. 20. Mala or Molly, hill brows, and Lush, a ring fort, L-I-O-S, originally simply an enclosure, 17 each. Cool or cool, see you for the I-L or see you for the L, Back or corner, also hard to tell apart. Um, 14. Tubber, a well, often a holy well, 13 examples. Carrig, a rock, sometimes also a castle, 12 examples. Cluck and cluchon or clucher, a stone or stone built feature, such as a castle or stepping stones, 11 examples. Actually, I'm not sure. 
Yes, this is for the whole of the county, I think. Uh, sorry, where was I? Uh, Bohar or Bohreen, a, a road or a little road, Bohreen would be the anglicized version of that. Kurok, a moor, a bog or a marsh. Moan, a bog. Pull, a hole or hollow. Rath, an ancient fort. Ten each. Bogon, bogoch or bogloch. Soft, boggy ground, nine. Cluan, a meadow, usually near water. Croak and Crochon, a stack or a little stack or a hill, eight each. Dura, which is, uh, some of you will know, is the Irish of the place name of Derry, Derry City in Northern Ireland, uh, which means an oak grove. Glan, a valley or a glen, you'll often have heard me saying Glan, Nabonia, the Boyne Valley. Luck or Luchon, a lake or a lakelet, seven each. Bulia, a milking place. A bully is usually a summer pasture for cows. A drim, which is a long hill or a ridge. Gari, G A R R A I Fada, a garden, I E or for cultivation. Shra, a riverside meadow, six each. Ahu, a field or open space. Remember, we talked about the Viking raids on the great monuments of Brunabonia in the ninth century in the annals of the Four Masters and the Annals of Ulster, refers to Newgrange, apparently, as Achu Aldi, the field of Alda, or Aldi, and Gort, a cultivated field, five examples each. Anyway, I've just read a couple of short extracts from what is a 400-page tome, a beautiful production. Missed a comment there. Elaine Dent Lingenfelter says, Hi, Anthony, what a nice surprise. Hello, Elaine, good afternoon to you. Peter Kennedy says, I wonder, does the book contain any info on the field containing the Cluck na far more stone where it is said that Cucullin tied himself to before he was killed? That's in County Loud, Peter. Let me just check. See if I can quickly find out. Um, now, there is no, I don't think, maybe, sorry, before I say anything, just let's research that. Mm. Yeah, there's no sort of, There's no easily, there's no uh, index to the place names in the back of the book. So I can't tell you immediately offhand. But actually, that's a question that I will research in the field names of County Loud. But I only have one copy of that, and I'm keeping that. That's for my library. But uh, if you're only just tuning in, uh, I just was announcing that I have acquired a copy of the out of print field names of County Mead, published in 2013. And uh, I'm going to raffle it to all of those who pre-order Mythical Ireland 2021 calendars on the Mythical Ireland website. Uh, and I'm hoping, I know I said on Monday this week, I'm hoping to send the, I'm just, I don't want to release it to the printer without proofing and proofing and proofing again to make sure there are no mistakes in the calendar. So uh, it's all ready to go. Uh, so I'll send it to print in the next day or two. Uh, so hopefully by around the 20th, maybe the 25th of October, I will have printed copies of the calendar to send to all those who pre-order and, of course, those who order afterwards. But at that point, when I receive the calendars from the printer, then I will hold the raffle. All of those who pre-ordered a copy, including all of you who have pre-ordered up to now, uh, will get uh, entered into the raffle for the Mead Place Names book. Alan Hoskins says, hello from Ballina, Killaloo, or Killaloo in County Tipperary. What a nice surprise this is. Well, I'm glad you think so, Alan. And I hope that there's been some little bit of, um, you know, uh, information in it, uh, that it's not just seen as a uh, uh, as a little bit of uh, marketing on my part. Sinead says, there are a lot of field names not covered in that book, the field names of County Mead. Well, yes. And I think uh, there's a very good reason for that, because Mead is a very, very big county, and this was a voluntary project. They did not survey every townland in Mead, and such an undertaking would probably uh, last uh, probably a decade or maybe a couple of decades. So there's a very good reason for that. Uh, however, it is still, I think, a very, very uh, fantastic insight into what is quickly becoming a lost part of Irish history, uh, only for the efforts of uh, local groups of volunteers, historical societies in particular, uh, very committed individuals. For instance, a lot of historians who are amateur historians, uh, in other words, they don't get paid for what they do, um, have uh, produced 
for instance, lists of uh, headstone engravings in various graveyards in this region in Loud and Mead, and in, in, of course in other parts of Ireland. And in, in many cases, these cemeteries are old cemeteries that are completely overgrown, and a lot of the markings are obscured, or they're being slowly eroded by rain and frost, etc. Um, and it just beggars belief the huge amount of commitment that there is there among uh, local uh, uh, groups. Um, this one, I think, is very impressive. Uh, and, and again, I, I wouldn't single out Mead over Louth because they're both fantastic uh, publications uh, and a huge, huge, huge amount of work went into them. Uh, but the Mead one I'm concentrating on tonight because that's the one that I'm going to give away in the raffle uh, for the calendar. Now, let me just say, see, there's more comments here. Marianne Dunn Kindia says, hi, just got here. Hello, Marianne. Lovely to see you, as always. Janet Moran says, always very nice to hear and see you, Anthony. Well, I'm delighted, Janet, that you've been able to join us. Caitlin Moon says, I believe there's a Facebook group about Irish field names, if anyone's interested. Brilliant stuff. Caitlin, you might share the link for us, would you? Because um, some people may not be aware of that. And if they have a link to it, they can just click it and like the page. Uh, that's brilliant. Anyway, I, I might actually share that to the page and the community afterwards. Patricia Healy Sullivan says, love from Vermont. Grow more art. Oh, glam the bone you, Patricia. I have to tell you that right now it is raining very heavily in the Boyne Valley. I'm glad that on my last evening at New Grange, which was yesterday evening, uh, because we're in a lockdown situation, sort of, we are able to venture in our own county. But unfortunately, as I'm always saying to you, I live in County Louth. Meath starts about a half a kilometre that way, uh, but I can't go to New Grange because it's in County Meath. Elaine Dink... De, 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 Dent Lingenfelter is saying hello to a few people. Alwyn Roy Badziak is in the house from Berkshire and says, this is a nice surprise. Well, I hope you're enjoying it, Alwyn. Sinead Russell says, one of the authors was local to me. I have the book. Okay. Sinead Russell. Hey, Caitlin, interested in, please, if you could tell me. Yes, exactly. Uh, share the link. And on YouTube, Nicholas Ofwelan, Konosatoshiv, Golair, Anocht, O Kondai, Fort Lorige. Uh I would say Tomage Kma, but I, I can only speak for myself. <laughs> Tome Koa, uh, Nicholas, thank you for asking. Uh uh Gunday Lu uh Anucht Agustashe Korbashti uh Anish. Uh, Des Mackenzie Harris says, My uncle Frankie Sands and his wife, Big Mary Ann, had a large farm at R D in County Louth. Good stuff. You see, this is the thing that people forget. The way land is sold over time, too, is that sometimes there's a local link there by a family who've owned land for a long time and they'll be aware of the names. But if they sell the land, of course, there's a danger always that this information just passes into history and is not recorded somewhere, which is why such projects are very, very valuable. And Nicholas is pointing out Gaeltacht, Fort Lauriga. Well, thank you. Uh, Nicholas, and uh, uh, apologies uh, that I don't have a full grasp of the Irish language. I am Tome Egfolum uh, Tome Egfolum Gaelga Arish uh, after a long absence of not speaking it, so please forgive me for any mistakes. Fenian Bray says, from North Topics Australia. Wow, good morning to you where it is the early hours of Thursday morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the Full Irish says, uh, I think the Full Irish is male, if I'm mistaken, please forgive me. Was in I, He was in Trim today for a couple of hours. Very interesting town, isn't it? Uh, it's incredible. And, of course, you see the Norman legacy there with the huge castle. But, um, of course, there's lots of stuff pre-Norman, of course. Kells is always, or uh, Trim is always immediately associated with the Normans, as if it only ever existed at that time. Of course, there's a connection there with Toynbo Cooling as well, isn't there? Um, um, the Balliatron uh, is it the Ford of the Liver, uh, where the 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 brown bowl of Cool Don Cooling, the brown bowl of Cooley dropped the liver of the Finn Benach when he dismembered him and was carrying him around the country. Very very ancient Indo-European uh, creation myth. 
the, the dismemberment of a beast and the dropping of its bits to form landscape features. Tip Top 9 says, The fields around my house in County Me, they're full of drumnin. My house is named Drum, Drumlin, just a stone's throw from Loch Crew. Brilliant stuff. A very, very ancient landscape there, of course, Tip Top 9. And uh, be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, I, I must. Perhaps it's something we could do an episode on, the, the, the field names. There's two books there full of them. We could easily do an episode on it. But I wonder if there's any field names in that area, Tip Top 9, that you suspect might be really, really, really ancient, as in prehistoric. Pagan Tree says, Anthony, what are the contents of your Newgrange book, considering purchasing? Hmm, interesting that we should diverge. Uh, Caitlin Moon is, is uh, giving us the link, which is brilliant. Kathy May Dayo has to go. I see you, Kathy. Thanks for joining in. Uh, raffle is for field names book that Anthony was told. Yes, thank you, Mariana, for answering somebody else's question. Yes, Patricia Healy Sullivan. So I'm, I'm giving away in a raffle a copy of this wonderful book, The Field Names of County Meath, to all those who pre order the Mythical Ireland calendar. Dr uh, Newgrange Monument to Immortality uh, is an effort, I suppose, to. To look at the monument of Newgrange or Sheedenbroga uh, from a broader perspective than merely uh, an archaeological one or merely a historical one, looks at. Uh, well, I'll I'll give you a sort of a brief. Uh, sorry, now that I've been asked, I might as well answer the question. Uh, sorry, who asked that question? I just want apologies. Barbara is waiting for a flat to be fixed, uh, and thinks it's a nice surprise that I've popped up on her screen. I'm glad you think so, uh, Barbara. Um, Sinead Russell. No, not Sinead Russell, sorry. Oh, oh dear, I'm so sorry. I've lost the comment about uh, Newgrange, the Newgrange book. Mariana Dunn. Aha, okay, Mariana. Many people who visit the ancient and magnificent New Grange monument in the Boyne Valley are driven by some deep longing to connect with their most distant roots. The giant 5,000-year-old megalithic construction evokes awe and wonderment and a keen sense of melancholy for the community of people who created and fashioned it from stone and earth in the remote past, a people now lost to time. For the past three centuries, archaeologists, antiquarians, writers and researchers have been probing Newgrange in the hope of revealing something about its purpose and something about the mysterious people of the New Stone Age who created giant structures using primitive technology. What has become clear from these investigations is that Newgrange is a uniquely special place and that its construction was carried out not by a grisly mob of grunting barbarians. <laughs> That's a little bit of marketing speak there, for which I apologise, a little bit kitsch maybe. But rather by an advanced agrarian community who had developed keen skills in the sciences of astronomy, engineering and architecture. In Newgrange Monument to Immortality, writer and researcher Anthony Murphy goes deep into the mind and soul of Neolithic ancestors to attempt to draw forth some answers to these questions. In a deeply moving, poetic and philosophical exploration, he looks beyond the archaeology and the astronomy to reveal a much more profound and sacred vision of the very spirit of the people who are driven to such marvellous and wondrous efforts. So I hope that sums it up for you. Uh, and it's uh, 276 pages. It's not quite as thick as Island of the Setting Sun, uh, but I believe that you will get a lot from it. Anyway... Uh, I hope that answers your question for you. Um, Adina Sparks is thanking uh, Caitlin for the link. Did they do a book for every county? Barbara, I don't actually know. What I know is that uh, John McCullen, who is the project chairman or chairperson on the Mead uh, project, I'm just going to double check this was also very heavily involved in the Louth project, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> well, he was involved. I don't know what his involvement was. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's involved in the Louth one as well. 
So we're talking about volunteers. I don't think there's one for every county. Now, it may be that there are um, field name books in, in progress or that there were others for other counties. Uh, and I want to tell you very briefly before I finish, I was, this was only supposed to be a 10 minute live stream and we're now 40 minutes. Um, I had a friend in uh, County Wexford uh, from Duncannon, the late Simon Kennedy. And in, I think it was 2012 or 2013, around the time the Mead Field Names book was being published, um, he was researching uh, a place called White Church. Uh, I think it was in Irish on Champel on Champel Gial, not on Champel Bon, Champel Chapel Chapel uh, Chapel Gial, I think it was. And anyway, in the course of his investigations, and he he had roped me in, and I was very happy to be roped in, to be honest, because I was fascinated by place names. He he was trying to locate the. Um, he was trying to pinpoint the location of where uh, this church might have been at White Church. And uh, in speaking to one of the landowners there, he was told that there was a field called the Temple Field. And in that field, uh, gathered into a pile, uh, I think around a tree, were loads of stones that at some point in the past had obviously been sort of swept up and moved uh, that may have been part of an old building there. So there are clues. I mean, when you see the well field, more often than not, there's a, a sacred well there, uh, perhaps a Patrick's well or a Bridget's well or Colum Kill's well that was once, uh, before Christianity, uh, a, a sacred place. Um, so it really is fascinating. A few questions on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I'm now seeing the connection. Pagan Tree is, I presume, the same person. Uh, thank you for your question. How old is Newgrange? Middle Eastern inscriptions, says Fenian Bray. Well, Newgrange is five. Uh, actually, the DNA evidence now, because the DNA bones of NG10, the one we talked about recently, Dr. Lara Cassidy and et al., their project, which researched the, the, the uh, G, excuse me, the genome of a, a male buried in Newgrange. They say he's 5,200 years. So that that is the accepted, I think, 5,100 to 5,200 BC, uh, five, 5,100 to 5,200 years old. So 3,100 to 3,200 BC, approximately. Nicholas says, no problem at all. As the saying goes, is fiara gelga brishta na berla klishta. We love the shows, Anthony. They're a breath of fresh air every week for those of us still connected to the past. Yes, I'm, I'm, I just seem to be sort of madly connected to the past. It's, I, I, I don't know if I consider it maybe a form of uh, neurosis or mental illness, but I, I just am absolutely deeply fascinated by Seamus Marr is in the house, says, well, clan. Hello, Seamus. Des Mackenzie Harris, thank you. Love the show and the history. The CBS Glen Road had a hard time getting the Gaelic into my thick head. I'm far northern, north, new, or sorry, New South Wales now. I'll be getting your calendar. Brilliant stuff, Des. Thanks for that. Yeah, they also had the similar problem with me. I think it was just the way Irish was taught in school. I just didn't have the love for it, that I'm, which I really regret now. I really regret that I'm not a fluent Irish speaker, but I'm intending to become one. So, Pagan Tree, it was me. Yes, indeed. Uh, Nicholas says, in the Gale Duct, we still have all the old names on the fields, and us fishermen have the same names on the coves and large rocks along the coast that fishermen have been using as landmarks. Grow more. Yeah, it's amazing that, you know, uh, you can navigate uh, by land and by sea, of course, uh, using these old place names and the stories associated with them. And, of course, the stories are a way of helping you to remember the place names. Um, you know, a a mnemonic, I think, is the word. A very unpronounceable name. M N E uh, word. M N E M O N I C. Mnemonic, but anything that helps you, like the mnemonic that I used as a kid to remember the planets, was my just my very easy method. Just sums up nine planets. Of course, NASA came along and said Pluto is no longer a planet; it's a minor planet, and it's not included anymore. So suddenly, my very easy method didn't look so good anymore. <laughs> but yeah, um, fascinating stuff. 
Uh, Caitlin says, are we done with trees and onto fields? No, we're not done with trees, Caitlin. I do intend to go back to trees. There are a couple of more that I have to cover. I think I have to do oak and I have to do rowan, I think. Uh, there are two at least that I have to do. So no, we haven't finished with them. I just didn't want to keep going with the trees. Uh, I want to go sort of break it with something else and come back again, if you understand. Kelly Minich is watching. Hello, Kelly. Grace Quirk says, we had a couple of the same field names in the townland where I grew up in County Cork. I suppose they are widely used, e.g. the well field and the church field. Yeah, the, exactly. The well field, uh, you know, uh, Tubber. Interestingly, at Newgrange, the field in which Newgrange is located, now, a smaller portion of that larger field was bought by the state in the 20th century, in the early, I think the 1930s possibly, I could be mistaken about that date, but that field, even down into the 20th century, well, certainly the, the 19th, that field was known as Bro Park, and Bro has been assumed to be an anglicization or a softening of the old Irish word Bro, uh, Bro being originally Brug, B-R-U-G, the mansion or the otherworldly abode uh, of Newgrange. And interestingly, too, down along the river close to Newgrange, there's also a Bro Lock, B-R-O-E, and there's a Bro House. Uh, and again, it has been pointed out that these are likely to be survivals of very, very ancient names. Uh, the whole uh, argument about language I'm not getting into uh, because the never the twain shall meet. Uh, some of the experts on language and medieval Ireland will say uh, that the monks brought, of course they did, they brought written language, but in terms of place names like Bro for Newgrange, that can't really go that far back into prehistory, we're told, but I disagree. And it's like the, the argument against it is how do place names uh, survive changes of language, changes of people, you know, and my argument is, well, if anybody in your family is a Christian, then you believe in this guy who lived in Palestine, you know, in uh, around 2000 years ago. And his story has survived many changes of language and has traveled all across the world. So I would say that that's, you know, that's not really, an, uh, I don't think it's really a valid argument uh, for the age of of uh, language and place names. And of course now there is an increasing increasing body of academics who suggest that uh, the Irish language didn't come with the Celts per se, because the whole notion of the Celts bringing Irish to Ireland and bringing other things is dissolving as we see in the uh, DNA record that there wasn't, sorry, I have to scratch my nose and I have to sanitize and wash my hands when I'm finished. Uh, that the whole notion of a Celtic arrival, an Iron Age arrival, is, is dissolving. Uh, and it's being thought now that perhaps uh, the language bedded down during the Bronze Age. So, look, I'm not an expert on these things, but uh, I'm following the whole thing with fascination. Deep fascination. Almost Shadagum Dolgaji and Letteris says Deirdre. Yes, indeed. Sha. We all learned that. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you saw the foil arms and the hog uh, skit where they were there was a, an English cop uh, questioning an Irish uh, suspect, uh, criminal suspect, and the Irish suspect only spoke Oscailge. And uh, he, he 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 asked a colleague in the police station who he said could speak Irish in and uh, it's very funny. You, you need to watch it if you haven't seen it. Foil arms and hug. Mariana Dunn says, it is in your DNA, Anthony. Well, I'm not, I don't know where it comes from. I don't, but I just feel especially uh, strongly connected to the place where I've been born and raised and I don't know what it is. Perhaps if I do a DNA, I said this before, if I do a DNA test someday, I might find out that I'm actually descended from English a family on one side and German on the other, or uh, you know, uh, Norman on one side and and uh, Bronze Age on the other. I don't know. You know, that is hilarious. I love them. Says Deirdre. Yeah, it's a very funny scene. Anyway, thanks for watching. 
Uh, this has gone on far longer than I anticipated, but that's okay. There's been lots of nice interaction, questions and comments, etc. Was the Boyne area wooded during Newgrange construction, says Pagan Tree? We're not entirely sure. Uh, it is hinted at in the mythology. I've written about this in my book, Mythical Ireland, New Light on the Ancient Past. In two Dinshanicus myths, uh, there is reference to trees being felled. One specifically about uh, Slaunia was king of Fir Bullog, or Fir Vullog, buried at Slain, allegedly on the hill of Slain. Uh, by him was its wood cleared by, from Bruna Bonia. Uh, so there's a suggestion in mythology that there was wood cut down. But I can tell you with a sort of a fair degree of certainty that we know by the late Neolithic and not having and he excavated uh, dates for the structures that were discovered in 2018. We now know that there was, or we're, we're pretty sure that there was, without dating, as uh, without digging and dating, the the structures. We're now pretty convinced that there was a substantial late Neolithic uh, monument uh, city. I don't know if you could call it a, an agglomeration of monuments, a, a huge complex, and. Uh, due to the fact that that filled much of the floodplain of the Boyne between Newgrange and the Boyne, uh, it is highly unlikely that there was any sort of thick forest there by the late Neolithic. Uh, so uh, without further um, archaeological investigation, I don't think we can answer that definitively, but certainly uh, it is not beyond the realms of possibility that as the monuments began to be built there around... Uh, well, I think there's a... A Neolithic house foundations under Nouth that probably goes all the way back to 6,000 years ago. So sometime after 4,000 BC, you can imagine that as the Neolithic community took hold there and took root there, uh, that they did start to knock down the forests to build the monuments. The late Neolithic structures, uh, the Drone Henge uh, uh, and other structures like the four posters, the Great Palisade, were all built of timbers. Those timbers had to have come from trees. It makes sense that those trees were chopped down locally rather than brought from a distance. But who knows? Because we know that some of the stones from Newgrange, the monument, uh, which predates all of that, uh, came from long distances. Oak, says Mez Marion. Was that oak as in what the structures of the late Neolithic were built of, which is right, by the way, that's the best guess of the archaeologists, or was oak a suggestion for uh, live Irish myths? Did we do oak? What did we do? I'll, I'll investigate that and we'll come back. Okay. Pollen analysis found huge clearance in the early Neolithic, says John Nulty. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, uh, we shouldn't at all be at all surprised that if you're going to build big monuments like that, especially monuments that need a view of the horizon, it's not just about, you know, uh, creating a clearing for a monument. It's also about creating a clear horizon for watching the sun uh, rises and sunsets. And of course, the moon rises and the moon sets, but of course the uh, jury is out on the importance of those. Des says, have you come across any field names in your books that relate to metalworking? Not immediately offhand, uh, Des. I can't say that I have, unfortunately. Alwyn Roy Badzek says, I'm on Duolingo too. Brilliant stuff. I hope you're more committed than I am. I haven't found much time for it lately. Adina Sparks is saying, good night. Stay safe. Yes, indeed. Still struggling with Duolingo, says Barbara Murphy. Stick with it. Just keep, you know, repeat and especially do those, you know, where it's not doing an actual test. It's actually just prompting you to revise what you've done. Those are very helpful as well. Anyway, um, so the impromptu live stream was just to tell you once more for those who are just joining us and everybody's going to leave now. The field names of County Meath out of print, uh, published in 2013. I'm raffling a copy for all those who pre-order the 2021 Mythical Ireland calendar. Uh, and you can pre-order that on mythicalireland.com. And that's the only place you can pre-order it. Um, so I'll just paste that in once more in the link, just in case I don't know where to order it. In the meantime, I was just thinking that over the last day or two that I probably will start doing a few more uh, live streams. I don't want to com commit myself to doing live Irish myths more than once a week 
because I simply couldn't go back to, I, I was doing it every day for 102 days uh, and I just need to do other stuff. Like I'm writing a book at the moment, but I definitely do want to do more live streams because first of all, we're in a sort of a lockdown situation here. And secondly, uh, I just want to give the opportunity for us to gather in a safe place uh, because I know that everybody enjoys it. Sheila Albert, Albert says, just got your island book. Thank you so much. Delighted to hear that it has arrived safe and sound, Sheila. I'm quite impressed uh, that the copies that I sent to the States uh, uh, and Canada that they left last. I, I brought them to the post office on Tuesday of last week. And on Monday, somebody got theirs. Most of them have started to arrive yesterday and today, which means it takes about seven or eight days to get from Ireland to the States, which is good. You know, it's really good. So I'm delighted to hear that. Enjoy it anyway. Don't forget, if you have any questions about it, pop them up on the Mythical Ireland community or send me an email. In the meantime, do the usual. Wash the hands and use hand sanitizer, social distancing, masks, all that stuff. Stay safe and stay well. In the meantime, thanks, everyone. Spread the word about the calendar. I'm... Uh, uh, very happy uh, that I have received enough, more than enough pre-orders to pay for the printing of it. Great. So I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be out of pocket as a result, which is great. As I said, it should have them in about two weeks. Oh, Anne's got Doherty says, I got mine on Monday too. Uh, don't be afraid to take a picture and share it on the Mythical Ireland community. Quite a lot of people have been doing that. Um, uh, and I think it's 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 lovely to see. So we'll probably talk to you between now and Monday. If not, we'll see you on Monday for episode 120 of Live Irish Myths. Uh, not quite sure what that will be about yet because I know we have to get back to trees, but there's lots of other stuff that we need to cover as well. There's plenty more um, material there for a lot more episodes into the future. So we certainly, I don't think we'll run out of things to talk about anytime soon. I certainly hope not. Anyway, in the meantime, have a very good day, a good afternoon if you're in the States, a good morning if you're in Australia, or if you're in Ireland or Britain or in near Europe. Of course, it's already nighttime. Have a sound sleep. Kolosov, Ichawa, Slongafol, August, Tog, Gupogay. Take it easy. Bye bye, everyone.